as i said i have put the central dogma the flow of information as the centerpiece of the way i am teaching this semester and uh, what i will be doing in today's class and tomorrow's class is focusing on replication and transcription and i will wrap up translation uh, in 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 the next week and then i will move on to the other parts which i am supposed to uh, to teach you so let's uh, look at transcription sorry let's look at replication first and then we'll look at transcription remember each time when i'm talking i these are all protein machines with the exception exception of a ribosome which is a rna machine it's a rna protein machines they all do chemical functions very very critical chemical functions there aren't always a single molecule there are many dna dependent dna polymerases uh, that is something you should understand uh, especially when we go from prokaryotes to eukaryotes you'll realize there is a world of dna polymerases out there a world of rna polymerases out there and so on and so forth these are all molecular machines and we are going to see one of these molecular machines in action today which is basically this machine the dna dependent dna polymerase and supporting it will be other machines which we will not spend too much time on and you learn about about them uh, in future molecular biology uh, courses so let's start with the building block because uh, the building block is really very very important and uh, the reason i am also showing you this so here i'm going to demonstrate drawing the simple structure of dna and now you don't need to be an artist to do this so what bib cares about is that you get the relative positions of the phosphate group the deoxyribose sugar both of those known as the sugar phosphate backbone and the nitrogenous bases relatively they need to be in the correct positions now, as I draw the second strand here, please note that it is anti-parallel. Um, my deoxyribose pentose sugar is effectively like pointing down. This is somewhat difficult to draw on a computer screen. For you, what you might want to do is actually turn the page upside down. So you're drawing the same shape, it's just in the opposite direction. Now, once you have drawn it, you want to make sure that you label everything. So that's the hydrogen bonds, the covalent bonds, the nitrogenous bases, deoxyribose, the phosphate group, and go ahead and draw a line around a nucleotide as well. All right, so this reminds you of what I've shown you earlier. Now let's go to replication. DNA replication is the process by which one DNA molecule is duplicated to make two identical DNA molecules so that the next generation of cells can contain the same genetic information. To understand how DNA replication takes place, we first need to remind ourselves of the structure of DNA with regards to the prime ends as shown here. DNA is double-stranded and notice that the right-hand strand is anti-parallel to the left-hand strand. Each of these strands undergoes DNA replication in a slightly different fashion. So I'll deal with each one of them individually, and then at the end, I'll show you how it takes place together. So we'll first deal with what we call the leading strand. The leading strand is the strand on the left-hand side, which goes from three prime at the bottom to five prime at the top. Now I'm going to stop here and uh, ask those of you who haven't done biology to start worrying about nomenclature. I know nomenclature is, is a little difficult, but the way I am taking you through uh, DNA replication and all other processes in a stepwise fashion, as long as you take the trouble of uh, noting down and revising things, you will be able to pick up all the nomenclature. First of all, the enzyme DNA helicase unwinds and separates the strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs. Next, the enzyme DNA polymerase adds complementary DNA nucleotides. Notice that the newly synthesized strand complementary to the original strand is anti-parallel. So to uh, go through this uh, again uh, before the movie completes, what DNA helicase is doing, it's called helicase for a reason. It's unwinding the helix. And if these are two strands of DNA, it's basically acting to break these two strands of DNA. Now, let's assume that the DNA strands are 100 bases long. So you have 100 such bases which have to be broken. But DNA replication also takes place in viral genomes, in bacterial genomes, and also in human genomes. And all of you know that they range somewhere around 10 raised to 4 base pairs to 10 raised to 9 base pairs. So that's a huge stretch of, stretch of DNA which has to be unwound and which has to be uh, remade 
uh, using DNA polymerase. And this is pretty, pretty much what I want you to imagine as you go along and ask questions related to this very complex, it's, it's a lot of work to make so many, uh, so many uh, base pairs. So helicase is doing its job, it's opening up the DNA. Polymerase on the leading strand is trying to basically copy the leading strand. And polymerase has this ability to attach uh, nucleotides uh, only on the three prime side. And this will create a problem and you will understand what this problem is. So what is DNA polymerase and DNA helicase? Like they are machines or they are some kind of molecules or what? They are, they are proteins and I am calling them machines because they do a lot of work. It's like having a vacuum cleaner or a mixie. They do functional work. But they are made up of proteins which are folded. So means they are enzymes and they are doing what? Exactly. Okay, sir. Uh, but how exactly does that helicase unwinds the DNA? Right. So these are the. So what you have just asked me is a, what what we define in uh, in in research and in biological research as an open question, right? So you will find very fascinating details of how these molecules were discovered and it struck scientists who discovered them the, the same kind of questions we are asking asking you are asking me how is it doing it right what is what are the steps what is the energy source and the most obvious question which will strike many of you if you start opening up a helix does it not cause uh, strain for example on on the side which is further away as you keep on opening up a helix aren't you increasing strain on the rest of the DNA, which is which has yet to be opened? And uh, how do you break a bond? How does the polymerase move uh, on this DNA? Does it grip the DNA? All these questions have been asked in the last 20, 30 years, and they are answers for most of them. And what has happened is now, uh, at least till the time I was a master's student, which is in the 90s, I had to visualize these things by myself because there were no animations at that time. Today, by the end of this talk, hopefully the animations will give you a better molecular picture. So what we have today is we have structures of DNA polymerase. We have structures of DNA helicase. We have structures of all of these with bits and pieces of DNA. So we actually can see at atomic resolution, mostly using X-ray crystallography, uh, static pictures of what, uh, what we are seeing. Okay. Now, what unfortunately we still don't have is dynamic pictures. And for dynamic pictures, we have to literally make animations uh, correct to molecular level detail and then try and understand what is going on. DNA polymerase is only able to add a nucleotide onto the three prime end of the previous nucleotide. As DNA helicase continues to unwind, the DNA polymerase continues to build the newly synthesized strand in the five prime to three prime direction, the same direction as the movement of the replication fork. As a result of this, we say that DNA replication on the leading strand takes place continuously. Now let's look at the other side of the original DNA strand. We call this the lagging strand. In the same way as before, DNA helicase unwinds and separates the two strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds. DNA polymerase also, as before, adds complementary DNA nucleotides. However, because of the anti-parallel nature of the original DNA strand, DNA polymerase has to work in the opposite direction on the lagging strand. So let me explain this a little bit more clearly. As the helicase is opening things up, initially it has opened, let's say, three or four base pairs. Now, in this direction, things are fairly simple. As the helix keeps on opening, the polymerase can extend to three prime and it keeps on adding nucleotides. So it's a continuous stretch. Initially, only three base pairs were open and the polymerase, a second polymerase, makes a little patch of DNA because it can only extend to three prime. By the time it's finished doing its job, three more base pairs have, base pairs have opened up. So it does the job again, three more. After that, you will realize three more open up. It will it'll do its job again and put three more. The number three is arbitrary. Okay. It, it's, it can be five base pairs, it can be 10 base pairs, but it can only extend in the three prime direction, DNA polymerase. Therefore, it is forced to do things in a discontinuous manner, three, five, 10 base pairs at a time. The net result is unlike the, the copying of the leading strand, which is on the left-hand side over here, which is continuous, 
the the making of dna the co- making a copy of dna during uh, dna replication in all biology is discontinuous okay and that is what i want you to take as a take home thing and let's see what this movie continues to say recall that we just mentioned that dna polymerase was only able to add a nucleotide to the 3 prime end of the previous nucleotide so what's different here with the lagging strand is that each time the dna helicase moves up the dna polymerase is operating in the opposite direction this results in the completion of the lagging strand in shorter fragments the lagging strand is therefore being completed discontinuously as compared to the leading strand that was completed continuously the fragments created are known as okazaki fragments in order to complete replication on this strand the okazaki fragments need to be joined together and this is done by dna ligase So to put it all together, here you can visualize the action of the enzymes on the leading and lagging strand and how they compare. Although in this animation, I do show the nucleotides already there. Recall that it is the DNA polymerase that adds those complementary nucleotides. To review, notice that on the leading strand, the DNA polymerase worked in the same direction as the DNA helicase, moving up the strand from the three to the five prime direction on the original strand. In contrast, on the lagging strand, the DNA polymerase and helicase work in opposite directions, and this leads to the creation of Okazaki fragments, which must be joined by DNA ligase. Finally, two identical daughter molecules of DNA are created, which are identical to the original piece of DNA. These daughter molecules then rewind to form a double helix. All right. So let me show you another couple of animations. Now, this is a actual structure at atomic resolution of DNA polymerase. It's one of the many polymerases which we have uh, purified, crystallized, and salt structures of. Okay, when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean scientists in general. In order to help people to visualize what this is doing, we look at DNA polymerase with a hand, and you have to put your hand on the screen. Well, not on the screen, next to the screen. and if you for example i am using my right hand and i am bending my fingers and i am bending my thumb and in the palm of my hand i can hold a rod or a pen and that is basically what the dna is and dna polymerase moves on this dna uh, with the dna moving through the hole which is there which is created by the fingers thumb and the palm and very obviously somewhere in the palm and thumb is the actual set of amino acid residues which are adding nucleotides which are consulting the strand which is already there and adding complementary nucleotides in a continuous manner okay so uh, this is the best way i can at this point give you a visualization of how dna polymerase looks like it's a protein machine it is made completely of of proteins and it does its job so again a pictorial view here is a let's say call it a leading strand which is in the 3 prime to 5 prime orientation polymerase sits on the single stranded dna i'll explain what i rna primer is this is a interesting concept but basically it's holding the single stranded dna on the palm of its hand and in a step wise manner it is adding nucleotides which are copies or complement of the 3 prime 5 prime strand and polymerase can only extend in the 3 prime direction which is shown as a gray dotted line over here all right okay So now let's see a couple of movies and then we'll end this class. Using computer animation based on molecular research, we are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. 
Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. Okay, I'm going to play this once more and I'm going to play the same movie in another form after this. Using computer animation based on molecular research, so, we are now able to see how DNA is, is actually copied in this living cells. The double helix, which is going to be copied. You are looking on at the bottom the over here. Of amazing miniature is the leading strand. Simple, simple to do. Apart, the, DNA the lagging strand becomes complicated. And cranking out a copy of each strand. And each of these fragments is a Okazaki fragment. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the same movie, which is now an advanced uh, version of the movie which you saw. During DNA replication, both strands of the double helix act as templates for the formation of new DNA molecules. Copying occurs at a localized region called the replication fork, which is a Y-shaped structure where new DNA strands are synthesized by a multi-enzyme complex. So this is the replication fork where the ligase is opening things. On the right hand strand is on the right hand side is the simple polymerase which is making a, a second copy of the leading strand. It's the lagging strand where things become more complicated. You have to do things in bursts simply because the DNA is not in the in the in the orientation which is suitable for DNA polymerase. Now you can ask another open question: Why didn't uh, whoever made biological machines? Why didn't they have DNA polymerases which could copy both in the three prime and the five prime orientation? Okay, and that remains an open question. We have never found a polymerase which can copy in both directions because if that was so, we would not have Okazaki fragments. Here, the DNA to be copied enters the complex from the left. One new strand is leaving at the top of frame, and the other new strand is leaving at the bottom. The first step in DNA replication is the separation of the two strands by an enzyme called helicase. This spins the incoming DNA to unravel it at 10,000 RPM in the case of bacterial systems. The separated strands are called 3' prime and 5' prime, distinguished by the direction in which their component nucleotides join up. The 3' prime DNA strand, also known as the leading strand, is diverted to a DNA polymerase and is used as a continuous template for the synthesis of the first daughter DNA helix. The other half of the DNA double helix, known as the lagging strand, has the opposite 3' prime to 5' prime orientation and consequently requires a more complicated copying mechanism. As it emerges from the helicase, the lagging strand is organized into sections called Okazaki fragments. These are then presented to a second DNA polymerase enzyme in the preferred 5' prime to 3' prime orientation. These sections are then effectively synthesized backwards. When the copying is complete, the finished section is released and the next loop is drawn back for replication. Intricate as this mechanism appears, numerous components have been deliberately left out to avoid complete confusion. The exposed strands of single DNA are covered by protective binding proteins, and in some systems, multiple Okazaki fragments may be present. All right, so I'll stop here.